Pitchers and catchers have officially reported to Tigers camp. We're going to talk about that. A.J. Hinch and Scott Harris both had a media availability. We're going to talk about some of the quotes that came out of that. Our first injury report of the year. We truly are back. And then we'll player preview Mark Canna. All today on Locked on Tigers. You are Locked on Tigers. Your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked on Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Thursday, February 15th, 2023, 24. Almost had me. Almost had me. Thanks for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On for $20 off of your first purchase. Now that I know what year it is, welcome back, everybody. Happy Thursday to all. So uh, today we are going to discuss. Like I said, the uh, the news and notes and sights and sounds out of the first official day of pitchers and catchers uh, reporting. So officially day one was Wednesday, the officially official day one, even though a lot of people had been showing up for a while now. We'll talk about that when we get into uh, AJ Hinch and Scott Harris having media availability. Some really interesting quotes, as I always say and think, um, but uh, I, I really do think that There was some, especially on AJ's side, I think there was some pretty good insight there. So we'll talk about all of that. We got to go over our first injury report of the year, something I do greatly appreciate in the Scott Harris era is the, uh, the, not necessarily the openness of the type of injuries that everybody has. That's pretty still like hush hush a lot of the times or not super specific. Um, But I do appreciate that uh, the injury report is public every single week uh, for the entire season. So we're, we're officially back when we have injury report number one. There's nothing serious on there, nothing new. Uh, then we're going to player preview Mark Canna, one of the newer members of your Detroit Tigers. So uh, really the only thing to come out of Lakeland and come out of Tiger Town on Wednesday was just the fact that it was officially day one. Pitchers and catchers did their first workouts and uh, in sessions and whatnot. And one of the interesting things um, that I think AJ brought up, and again, we'll break down the full media availability here in a minute, um, was that uh, everybody, he, it was a pretty generalized statement. So I don't know if everybody actually means everybody or just a lot of people or whatever. Um, but he had said that, you know, so many people on the pitching side of things are already uh, really kind of ramped up and ready to go. And uh, mentioned that so many people have been here for a while now as well. Uh, Mentioned, you know, comparing and contrasting the modern athlete to, you know, previous generations of athletes when people would, you know, not do too much work in the offseason and then just kind of show up in spring training when it was a time to get into shape. It's not really how a lot of the dudes, at least in this organization, approached this spring, which I think is really good. That's a good sign. Again, I don't think that makes us like unique or that, you know, we, the Tigers do work all year round and like other teams don't. No, that's not what I'm saying, but it's still nice to hear regardless. So again, just as we have with all these reports, take it for what it is. Kenta Maeda, kind of the biggest uh, name player to show up on Wednesday. Like I said, so many people kind of already had been there, but uh, Maeda there and getting work in and apparently has been doing a lot of work in the winter as well. So uh, Tarek Skubal already throwing a decent amount. Jake Rogers uh, catching Tarek Skubal. Um, There was one video, I think Evan Petzold, I want to say, of the free put it out there, but um, it, it maybe it was. No, I think it was, but um, had a, a video of Jake Rogers catching and A.J. Hinch watching and analyzing Jake Rogers catching, and then Fetter was watching on the on the mound I think it was Scooble, but whoever was throwing to Rodgers, and it's just kind of the, I I just love spring, right? Like we're all fine tuning, we're we're ramping up, and uh, it's it's a really fun time of year. Baseball's almost back, baby. We're uh, we're we're getting closer and closer to full team reporting, even though a lot of players are already here. I've said that a million times. I'm so sorry, but it's it's worth reiterating. Uh, And then 
yeah, within, uh, you know, the next couple of weeks, we'll start spring training games by the end of February here. So, um, okay, let's move on to kind of the biggest thing that came out of Wednesday in Lakeland, which was the Scott Harris media availability and obviously the AJ Hinch media availability. Uh, some interesting quotes here. I highly recommend you go watch the full videos. Uh, I know for a fact that Evan Petzold of the free has the full kind of interviews and, and uh, it's, it wasn't a one-on-one -on -one interview, obviously all the media was there. So it had the entire, you know, availability uh, on camera. So you can go watch both of those videos um, through him, but I'm sure that uh, a lot of the beat writers were all over it. So go, uh, go look at any of our fine resources in uh, for this team. But um, a few of the quotes stood out to me and that I just want to bring up in general. I think we're going to start with Scott Harris because that's the first video I watched. Um, and, and I think there's a little bit less here. I think this was more kind of generalized speak, but there's a few points I, I wanted to bring out. Uh, one, he started the availability by saying this is a talented group. Uh, you know, I think his exact quote was make no mistake about it. Like this is a talented group, but also acknowledge that the team has to get a lot better over the next six weeks. So something that uh, I I think I agree with, right? There, there is some talent on this roster, but you certainly have a long way to go, sure. Um, but I, I think that starting off avail your your first availability of spring training, being like, hey, we got to get a lot better, is, is kind of kind of kind of gutsy. And um, I I don't know if I appreciate that or I'm concerned about it. I don't really know, but I don't think he's lying either. I think that that's probably a fair assessment. Um, the, the meat of this, he, he mentioned Mark Canna, which again, we're going to talk about Canna in our player preview, uh, coincidence, absolutely not. Um, but just said that that was, uh, one of the acquisitions he liked and they wanted to do it early in the, in the off season. Obviously they kind of had to because of the, the opt out that he had with Milwaukee and whatnot. But, um, yeah, just, you know, talked about how the, they wanted to add someone who is a veteran middle of the lineup, potential bat, but also a mentor thinks he got it in Mark Canna. Great. Um, the, the biggest thing that he talked about that really jumped out at me was saying that the lineup was full of young hitters. And that if you look at baseball over the last like 10 or 20 years, that lineups that are full of young hitters are the most unpredictable. Now, if you're an everydayer, we had this conversation three or four episodes ago, right? And the reason that I brought it up was because Chris Brown of Motor City Metrics brought it up, uh, and he was the first person that I saw kind of make that correlation about, you know what, a lot of the team is young players or injured players, and those are two very difficult groups to predict. And so Scott Harris kind of sharing that sentiment, it seems, you know, it's a young lineup. They ha he admits they have a lot of talent, but also there's a little bit of unpredictability there. And the, the unique part about this, right, was that he, he brought that up and then said the way that he was going to combat that was via getting pitching. And on surface level, that's like, that feels weird, right? You go, hey, yeah, we have an unpredictable offense. How do you deal with an unpredictable offense? Well, of course you signed pitchers. Right. And that is kind of a, uh, again, a unique angle to kind of approach that, uh, that stance on. Um, but I, I also kind of understand where he's coming from as well. Uh, essentially, he, well, we'll, we'll get into the rest of it. We'll kind of say his piece on it right after I tell y'all about our friends over at Game Time. Game time is the definition of clutch. It's the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total upfront so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. You can buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Just two taps and you're all set. Game time is obsessed with finding you ways to help you save money. They have deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even half an hour after it starts. It's the best place for last minute seats, which is why I love it so much. I'm a spontaneous person when it comes to attending sporting events. I'll just wake up one day and kind of decide I want to go see the Tigers. So it is truly the best out there for so many reasons. And that is my favorite reason as to why 
I use Game Time exclusively. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On, capital L, capital O, all one word, for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Segment two of Locked on Tigers. Appreciate y'all for tuning in, making us your first listen every single day. Shout out to the everydayers that do tune in. Every day, we will be back tomorrow with more news and notes from spring, as well as more player previews. Also, be sure to check out Locked on Sports Today, which is the 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and it's now available on Amazon Fire TV. 24-7, 24-7, Locked On, covering the top sports stories of the day. Local experts of Locked On, plus national shows covering every league and team. Find Locked On Sports today, now available on for free on the Fire TV channels app. Okay, so uh, talking about Scott Harris's comments here before we move on to A.J. Hinch. Uh, talking about how he, he acknowledged that young hitters are unpredictable and the way that he wanted to help the unpredictable lineup that we have. It was to go get pitchers, get a little bit more veteran presences in there. I, you know, obviously Kenta Maeda and Jack Flaherty, and he kind of essentially his point was: if you have an unpredictable lineup full of young hitters, if you have really good pitching, then you can keep games close, and you can kind of overcome those stretches where the lineup might go cold. And then when the lineup's hot, obviously everything's fine and dandy, but when it's cold, you have the pitching to be able to keep games close. I appreciate that, and I respect it, and I don't disagree with that opinion. I would say that uh, I think there is somewhat of an argument for if you have an unpredictable lineup full of young hitters, maybe bring in more veteran hitters. But I also, like that's, Both can be true, I guess is my point, right? Like you can like pancakes and waffles, right? You know what I'm saying? Like you can, you, you can, uh, you can acknowledge that the, you can get a better pitching staff and acknowledge that that is going to help your lineup that has struggled immensely over the last two seasons, uh, and also help your lineup with players that help your lineup. I think both are obtainable. Both are true. And you, you, obviously can do both. And so that was kind of the, I don't want to call it weird or anything. Um, Cause again, I understand where he's coming from, but uh, not even a pushback. I don't even know. That's just a thought, I guess. That, that's really all I have to say. It's just a thought that I had while he said that I, I you know, I wasn't angry about it. I wasn't like that stupid. He's right. Uh, but I, I, I think there's, there's more that you can do to help an unpredictable lineup as well than just that. I think there's, there's more you can do as well. That's all. Um, And yeah, you know, one of the things I really liked that he said was at the end of his availability when he, uh, someone asked him, I don't know if I recognize who, but somebody asked him who, uh, or or rather what the Tigers identity is. What does he want the Tigers to be known for? And his answer was a place where players can get better, a place where uh, players, whether it's internally through the system, getting promoted externally via trade, externally via free agency. However, he wants the general consensus and kind of the perception of the Detroit Tigers to be that is a team that I can go to and improve on while I am there. Awesome. We're going to talk about that a little bit with Mark Canna. I think that would be great if that started this year. You're already seeing it immensely on the pitching side. We already have the Michael Lorenzen success story, right? There's already a couple Tyler Holton, right? There's already several success stories on the pitching side. The next step is to be able to to have that, uh, that, I don't know, opinion or stance or just see the effects of that, rather, on the offensive side of the ball as well. That's kind of the big thing here. Um, Okay, let's get into some of A.J. Hinch's quotes. Uh, Basically said that this was uh, maybe the most talented team he's had since he became a Tiger. Said the team is harder to make than he's ever had, especially on the pitching side of things. I completely agree with that. I I think that that's a pretty true statement. Um, Made a joke where he said that Ty Madden and Jackson Job have already been told that they're not going to make the team. So there you go. We we start off with whatever it is, 58, 59 dudes in camp, and we're already uh, already down two, Jackson Job and Ty Madden. That's not a surprise. No one expected either of them to make the major league roster, but 
uh, kind of mentioned that the reason why they they wanted to invite these you know higher ranked prospects in the organization out to still be a part of camp was uh, to be able to get them acclimated with the team, with the clubhouse, with the players, and just how the major league team does business. So um, we'll see. I'm really fascinated with Job specifically, but also Madden. Uh, their usage in games is going to be really fascinating to me. We'll talk about that when we get into uh, – I've teased this for like a week now, and I'm going to continue doing it. We'll have an episode where we break down, you know, biggest things to watch for in spring training. That's going to be one of them, to be honest, is uh, how often do do Jackson, Job, and really all the prospects play in the spring. So, uh, But Job, I think, kind of more so than everybody else just because he's a pitcher. Um, mentioned that everyone has been there for a while already, which is something we've talked about for four days in a row now, but, uh, it, you know, it's coming from straight from the source, you know, it's nice to hear, but yeah, he, he mentioned that everybody has been there for a while and that the work they've been putting in is legit. And it's actually, uh, he, he mentioned that the, the pitchers, especially cause Wednesday was pitchers and catchers day, obviously, uh, have been working so much in the winter that, uh, they're, they they have to catch up to where they are. Like they have to catch up to to where they are as far as their revamp process goes, uh, because they don't want to start from like true day one and have dudes actually like regress and and like take a step backwards in their current throwing program and development. So uh, I think that's all good things, man. People are ready to work, and, and that's an awesome sign. That that's exciting. That'll get you fired up, baby. All right. Um, I, I think the only other thing that really jumped out at me about AJ's was just that he said this a few times. This isn't a new quote, um, but he just said that uh, people really want him to give like we're our eyes are set on the division or like anything like that. And he just refuses to. And he keeps saying we haven't earned it. And, and that's like a big thing with him. It's like we haven't earned the right to talk like that. We have to win more. Um, and, and he was asked a lot of questions. Again, go watch the full availability uh, online, both of them. Uh, I think there's a lot of insightful stuff there, but talked about hitting the ground running and getting off to a, a, a hotter start because they've struggled in April. Um, you know, th there's a lot of, of things that kind of play into that, but uh, the, the overlying message both of them had, and this is where if you were to make a Venn diagram of both of their quotes, where it would cross is that uh, it's a talented roster they're really excited about the year, but there is a lot of work that they think needs to be done over the next six weeks. And there is a lot of growth that they want, and they want this team to get better. Uh, and is that shocking to anyone? Are they going to go in front of a microphone and say that they want the team to get worse or that like we're World Series ready today on February 14th? No. Obviously, I understand that that's you know, kind of what they have to say, but uh, that is – the biggest stories from uh, from Wednesday. Like I said, go check out the videos yourself. Uh, the only other thing that came out of Wednesday was, of course, our first medical update of the year from the Tigers PR department. Does wonders. Uh, this was usually a, I forget what day of the week it was. Was it always a middle of the week? I thought it was like a Sunday or a Monday. We had a day where we would always go over the medical report. Um, Dylan Dingler, Riley Green, and Garrett Hill, the only three players uh, in the organization on the injury report. Riley Green, obviously we know uh, his situation. They are calling it a right elbow sprain, which I think is kind of funny. Uh, continues to progress through a hitting return to play program. Awesome. Garrett Hill had a right lat shoulder strain, felt discomfort throwing a bullpen last week and was diagnosed with a mild lat strain. He'll be reevaluated in seven to 10 days. So hopefully he's fully healthy, you know, by the mid part of spring training or the end of spring training. And then Dylan Dingler, probably the, the one that jumped out at you the most, but it doesn't look like anyone's too worried about it. Uh, he had a perceived procedure to remove loose bodies from his right elbow. Uh, and he's currently completing a return to play throwing program and is available for all other baseball activities. He actually took BP and there's a video going around of him taking batting practice on Wednesday. So uh, I, I don't think that it's that big of a deal if the dude's already taken hacks. We'll see how his arm goes. Obviously, a big part of catching. Uh, we'll we'll see how his uh, his program goes as far as the arm, but he's already taken swings. I'm not too too worried about it, so we'll keep an eye on that. All right, let's get into our player preview, uh, where we preview Mark Canna for the 2024 season. We'll do that right after this. 
Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. You can bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, just normal spreads, money lines, totals, and so much more. So just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. All right, everybody, welcome back here to third and final segment of Locked on Tigers. Appreciate you all so much for tuning in, making us your first listen every single day. Shout out to the everydayers that do tune in every day. Uh, so we are talking about Mark Canna. He will be our player preview today. Last season, uh, Mark Canna played for, obviously, the Mets and the Brewers. Uh, ended up playing in 139 games across those two teams. That's over 500 plate appearances, so a full season of work there. Had a 262 average, a 355 OBP, and a 400 slug on the nose. Uh, was worth 1.6 fan graphs war with a 9.7 walk rate and a 15.6% strikeout rate. So, the player of Mark Canna. You know, I, I I still support this move. I like it. Uh, I have zero issue with it. This is not a high ceiling move. And that's what we said at the time when we acquired him, right? And, and it's something I'll reiterate now. This is a floor-raising move. This is a guy who, at his worst, right? Let's just say, you know, he's 34. The, the age catches up with him and the bat speed slows down a little bit maybe. And he's uh, he's not able to generate a ton of power. He's never been a super high batting average guy anyway. Even if all of that happens, right, he is still going to get you walks. And he's still going to work ABs. He's not going to swing and miss a ton. And he is just going to be a tough, tough AB. Um, and again, if the power falls off, and, and it's, look, I mean, we can call it what it is. It already Looks like it's not what it was back in his prime days, which I would argue were 2019 through 2021. Uh, his home run totals have dropped each of the last three years. His slugging percentage has, well, I guess the last three years, it's been about the same. Uh, 387, 403, and 400 in his last three seasons. Um, but this is a guy that at one point in 2019, juiced ball season, mind you, but in 2019 had a 26 home run, 80 RBI uh, season. Sorry, 60 RBI, 80 runs scored. Um, four win season, right? And that, that was 2019. That's five years removed now. So we're not going to anticipate or expect that player, obviously. But looking at these last couple of years, man, I, I have zero issue. I, I'm very pro adding this bat into this lineup. He's a righty-righty, uh, plays corner outfield. And I think one of the other things that this team likes about him is the fact that if needed, he has some positional versatility. Like I said, has played a lot of corner outfield in his career, uh, played a lot of right and left field last season, was a slightly plus defender in right field, was a slightly minus defender in left field in 2023. So take that for what you will. Um, but logged an inning, I think, a couple few innings at third base last year uh, and still gets time at first base. I'm going to go on record now. Uh, I think that this is your backup first baseman. I, I, I truly do. I, I think that on days that Torkelson needs a day off, you want to DH him for a game. Maybe the defense doesn't improve and you want uh, to give a look to somebody else to see if maybe they can get a better you know, de defensive first baseman out there. Uh, I think Mark Canna is going to be this team's backup first baseman. Now, spring training, we haven't even seen a spring training game yet. Okay, so a lot of this is still subject to change. We'll see kind of the nebs and flows of spring training. But as it stands on February 15th, uh, I would imagine that Mark Canna is going to be your backup first baseman as well as one of your starting corner outfielders. Um, I think that's the expectation is for him to be one of your starting corner outfielders. And I think that that is exactly why you brought him in. You don't bring him in to, uh, I guess you could bring him in to DH him, but I think there's enough of a rotation and kind of a, uh, an in and out and, and changing, I don't know, puzzle work, to be honest with you, with the DH position at the moment where he will certainly see times at DH. He will certainly see times in right and left field. 
and he will certainly see times at first base. Um, I guess if you really need like a safety valve emergency option in center, uh, I, I don't think he's – last time he played center field, according to Savant, was 2022, but didn't – not very much. Uh, played 2021, I guess a little bit more of a sample size there in center field for the Oakland A's. That's even three years removed. So I don't think the plan is for Mark Cannon to play a lot of center field. Uh, I don't think that uh, we should go into the season assuming that. But uh, I guess if you really, really need it, that's kind of something you can uh, – again, you can kind of pull the, pull the safety valve on and throw them out there. But the biggest thing, again, is this is a high floor player because of his approach. That That is the overlying theme. That's the reason that the Detroit Tigers like him. That's the reason they brought him in. Uh, his walk rate year after year is well above league average. This past season, like I said, was 9.7%. His career mark is 99 And there was a three-year stretch from 2019 to 2021 where his walk rate was 13.5%, 15.2%. That was the 60-game COVID season, mind you. And then 12.3% in 2021. So uh, at his best, this is a guy that is in the upper echelon of baseball in drawing walks. Now, the last two years have been 8.9% and 9.7%, which is still well above league average, right? You're talking 65th percentile, 65th percentile in 2023. Um, but you not the you know 12 percent that it was back in his heyday either but uh again you're, you're still talking about a guy that uh is has a really good eye chase rate 78th percentile does not expand the zone very often and on top of that you know a lot of guys we see guys like this is in no way shape or form meant to like stir the pot or anything this is just the first person that came to mind matt chapman for instance right who does draw walks but also Swings and misses a ton and strikes out a lot, right? Mark Hanna is not that. Mark Hanna had, was in the 86th percentile in whiff rate, right? Top 14% in baseball and fewest amount of swings and misses. And 87th percentile in K rate with just a 15.6% strikeout rate. Uh, again, top 13% in the league. Uh, yeah, man. Like Again, this is a guy who at his best is going to be one of the toughest strikeouts in baseball, also one of the, the the better walk drawers in all of baseball and can run into some homers. And, and again, we talked about uh, at the beginning of this segment, you know, not the power that he used to have. His career slugging percentage is 422, and he hasn't been above 408 since 2019. So I'm expecting around a 400 slug but keep that OBP up there. His career on base percentage is 350, which is why his career OPS is 771, which almost every year is going to be well above league average. Um, this is a really, really professional hitter that I think, to Scott Harris's point and credit, can mentor these guys, help them with their kind of mindset in at bats. Uh, isn't going to hit for a super high average. His career average is 250. He's hit over 260 the last two seasons. So I, I guess you can kind of anticipate that 258 to 265, you know, batting average range. But the biggest reason they acquired him and the most value he brings is going to be that on base percentage. He's going to put the bat on the ball, he's going to draw his walks, and he's going to get on base at a 350 or better clip. Uh, again, that, that 349 career on base percentage almost doesn't even do it justice given the fact that in his last five seasons, his OBP has been 355, 367, 358, 387, and in 2019, a whopping 396. He had an approach change, and Evan Petzold highlights this really well and has talked about it a few times. Um, he had an approach change in his late 20s. Uh, he was having a hard time finding a standing on the major league roster. And then his age 28 or 29, 29 season came along and he started uh, being a lot more patient at the plate and completely reinvented his game and turned into uh, one of the, the, the better hitters in the sport for a couple of years. So I'm not anticipating him to show up and have an OPS over 800. And I don't think you should either. This is a, a solid, you know, middle or, or bottom part of the lineup bat. I guess there's, there is a conversation to be had for him batting leadoff because he has the on-base percentage to go with it. Uh, that's something that a lot of managers, A.J. Hinch included, really like in today's day and age of baseball is putting somebody who can get on base 
you know, really well at the very top of the lineup. Uh, so maybe that'll be a conversation. We might see some tinkering with the lineup. It's also AJ Hinch. He's going to roll out there 162 different lineups this year. And Mark Hanna is going to pinch hit and get pinch hit for et cetera, et cetera. Not much of a platoon, pretty even against righties and lefties. So not too much to, to worry about there uh, in terms of, you know, is he only going to face one handedness or whatever? That's a big thing. Whenever we acquire somebody new with AJ as our manager, obviously, but yeah, man, again, I don't have too much else to say, which is why I'm comfortable just kind of throwing uh, and talking about him here at the as at just in the final segment of a show. This is a high floor, low ceiling move. He's not going to be an all star for you. He's not going to hit 20 homers, right? He, he's not going to uh, going to be like your best hitter in the heart of the lineup, um, but he extends your lineup. He is going to make pitchers work. He's going to be a solid mentor, and he's going to be a tough out in your Tigers lineup that also has some positional versatility. I'm totally fine with with the I liked the acquisition when it happened. I still like the acquisition. I think that he's a great addition into this lineup. He really preaches, at, or, or he acts in how the Tigers preach, right? Like he draws walks and dominates the strike zone. And that's exactly what the Tigers have been preaching ever since Scott Harris took over. So he's a perfect fit in terms of that. Uh, I really like the Mark Hanna move. Uh, not going to tear the cover off the ball or be some world beater, but he is going to be at his best, one of the more consistent players in your lineup week in and week out. The only uh, red flag, I guess I would say, and the only potential for like fear uh, that, that I have with this is that, again, you look like the power has been slowly going down for the last three or four years. If that continues to go down, and he just loses all pop in the bat. And the batting average obviously is not going to get significantly better. We know that it's going to be around that 250, 260 mark. Um, so that's really like the, the worst case scenario, I would say. And, and if you do hit worst case scenario, it's a one-year deal. You're not tied up long-term. It's not some catastrophic thing. As we've talked about a lot, you have a boatload of outfield depth. So, like, if Mark Hanna, you know, like, if you're a huge hater of this move, which I know that I, I read my own comments, I know some people really didn't like it. Uh, if you can't stand it and you're like, you know what, this is the worst thing ever. Well, if he sucks, you know, we, we have a ton of corner outfielders in this organization <laughs> and, and he's on a one year deal. So, so he'll be, he'll be removed. We'll count our losses and somebody else will get an opportunity. Uh, I really, I think that this is uh, this is a really good move, and I'm really excited about him being in the lineup. I think that he adds a very, very needed and nice presence in the middle to bottom middle part of your lineup. I think probably at his best, he's your, what, six hitter, maybe? I think that that's probably where uh, you kind of want to slot him in. We'll mess with some lineups as we get closer and closer to, to the season and are in the middle of spring training as well. Um, but yeah, again, some conversation for lead off for him also. Uh, but I, I think he's going to spend most of his work probably in that five through seven uh, spot in the lineup. And and that's extending the lineups key, man. Extending the lineup is, is what it's all about. You want uh, professional hitters top to bottom. And Mark Canna is pretty much the definition of a professional hitter. Okay. So yeah, two thumbs up. Uh, excited about what he can do. Pretty optimistic about that one and i uh, yeah i'm all for it baby thanks for making lockdown tigers your first listen every single day shout out to the everydayers that do tune in every day we will be back tomorrow for yeah more spring talk more player previews keep the ball rolling baby all right peace and love going to therapy's dope i'll catch you all then go tigers baby